Okay, um, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, wherever you are um, joining from. It's good to have you here. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome you all to our project management webinar. And um, it's awesome to have you all here. It's awesome to have you all here. Um, I'll just wait for the more people to join. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Uh, so in the meantime, as people are joining, can we just have do a quick um, location check here? If you could just go ahead and um, put in the chat box wherever you are joining from so we can, um, so we can get an idea of where you are joining from, that would be great. So um, please um, just uh, quickly go ahead and put your, um, put your location where you're joining from in the chat box. Let us say hi to you. Let us get to know where you're joining us from. From Steph, Steven Bala from Lagos, Nigeria, you're welcome. Good Dorcas from Onatoriu, Canada, you're welcome. Uh, Bridget Jones from Washington State, USA, you are welcome. I'm Ram Kuna, Kuma, <laughs> I hope I got that right. So from Chennai, India, you're welcome. Juliet from Lagos, Hussam from Canada, um, you are welcome. Um, James from Alberta, Kintola, you are welcome, everyone. Um, we are really, really, really excited to have you all here. And we are looking forward to having a great session with you guys. Um, yeah. So, um, we already have quite a number of people on the call, so I would um, go ahead with introductions. On my end, um, my name is uh, John Ogota. I am the content developer here at BNET Learning, and I am very excited to be your host for um, today's event. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so I'm very excited to be, to be your host for today's event, and I am looking forward to having a great session with you all. Uh, um, yeah, so yeah, a bit of introduction. Binet Learning um, is a world-class learning platform that provides a constant or consistent source of relevant knowledge needed to thrive in the highly competitive human capital market. Our classes are held by world-class, experienced, certified, and expertly trained um, professionals. Um, we also offer trainings on various certification courses, such as the certification in certification in um, business analysis professional (PMP), Scrum Master (SPOC). Um, data analysis. We also offer hands-on training for courses like business analysis and project management. Um, before I go on, I'd like to apologize. Um, I know we are supposed to have um, James, Olayin, Kagola, and um, Faith Otuna over here, but Faith cannot be here with us because she had a bit of um, emergency, so um, she can't be here with us today. So um, apologies from her end. Um, we we still have um, real capable um, and experienced facilitators that would, in, that would be able to help us get through the session easily in James and, and um, Olayinka. So, yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so I was um, talking about um, the courses that we offer, Binet Learning. We also are in the business of mentoring individuals. As we like to say here at Binet Learning, you know, we don't just teach, we coach, and we also mentor. You can visit our website at um, www.binetlearning.com. You see the course page on our website to find out uh, more of courses that we offer on our end. Um, yes, so we are really excited to and happy to have you all here, and we are looking forward to having a great session with you guys, like I always said. Um, you can feel free to use the chat room for comments and questions if you have any, um, so as not to disrupt the flow of the event. So yeah, today we are pleased to have our um, 
speakers with us, keynote speakers, um, like I said, Faith um, will not be able to join us, but um, we still have um, James Adebayo and um, Olayinka Abola to um, handle today's session for us. So first I'd like to, uh, so yeah, um, these speakers who are with us bring a wealth of experience in project management. And um, first I'd like to introduce James Adebayo. James Adebayo, um, a bit of, um, James Adebayo is, um, has over 15 years of experience in, in project management, change management, and continuous improvement, working in various sectors, including oil and gas servicing, renewables, telecoms, financial, and the government. James has helped guide many project managers in securing their project management certification and remains devoted in expanding the knowledge and practice of project management. He is part of the Binet Learning Faculty and a program manager for Canada's top brokerage firm. So um, James, if you could say hi to everyone, that would be uh, appreciated. Thank you so much, John, for, for that warm introduction. Um, and I want to welcome everybody to, to this session. Thank you. All right, thank you, James. Um, yes, yeah, so next we have um, Olainka Agola. Olainka is a competent lead scrum master, agile coach, project manager, and program manager with over a decade of tangible experience in managing multidisciplinary teams of varying size and complex programs of works. He has the ability to build strong relationships with all stakeholders and to turn proposals to reality, especially successful in management tools that demand rigor, a high level of drive and dedication and focus on delivering business outcomes through the use of methodologies. So um, Olainka, if you'd like to say hi to um, everyone on the call here today, um, it's nice to have you here, sir. If you got Amit, sorry, Amit, your, yeah, I'll meet if you're speaking. Uh, all right. Hello, everyone. It's yeah. good to be here today, and I'm looking forward to a great session. Okay, thank you, Lainka. Um, we are we are excited to have you here today, too. And um, yeah, on this end, um, I'll pass it on to James, who will take us through a brief introduction or introductory session of what project management is all about. And yeah, James. Thank you so very much, John. And I want to welcome everybody. Um, thank you for taking time out on your weekend to join us um, today. And I'm so excited to have with myself, Olayin Kagbola joining to co-facilitate the session. And on behalf of um, Faith Oshinawa, I also want to apologize. Um, she, she had to attend to a medical emergency and I know she would truly, I'd love to be part of the session, but um, I believe we'll have the opportunity later in the future to bring her in um, and to share perspective on our project management journey. So. But I can assure you, we have a great session for you today and thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. I wanna jump right into it and, and there's so much content to, to deliver today. There's so much um, that we'd we'll like to share with you, but as much as we want that, we also want to hear from you. So please, if you have questions, um, if there's any sort of um, thing that is resonating with you, feel free to put that in the chat and, and we, would, we would ensure that we project that as we go through the session. So questions, contributions, please let's use the chat as much as possible. We want this session to be as interactive as possible. All right, before I go into the presentation, the final thing I'd like to say is whether you are a project manager or intending to start off 
on the journey into project management or you have tons of years as project manager, there is something for you to, to get out of the session. Um, for, for intending project managers, of course, we'll share with you the steps you know, to, to be able to go into the project management career. For project managers already and you know, mature project managers, um, top project managers, there would also be content to help you mentor, coach um, other project managers and things you can use in your, in, within your career to better yourself. So this is not just for new project managers, it's for everybody. All right, as, as part of the presentation today, we'll have Olayinka provide insight from his perspective and his experience. Um, we, I'm trying to avoid to speak to too much literature today, um, but I will present some and insight from my own perspective um, in what I see in project management and what I've seen in the last 15 to 20 years. In terms of my presentation, we will look through the why, the what, and who of project management. Um, we'll then look a little bit into what the project management career offer, and then we'll wrap it up with a little bit around what it takes um, in terms of specific steps to go into the project management career. So that's, that's it, we're gonna make it short and sweet for everybody. I, I wanted to start from the why of project management because we've seen lots of literature that defines project management, speak to the project management framework, um, and trying to justify the need to, whether it be waterfall, to be agile, to be scrum or whatever that is, but not many literature speaks to the why of project management. And I wanted to just share in, in the little time I have with you this, this morning, afternoon or evening about why we truly need project management. The first is of course about consistency in delivery. And, and I say that because just imagine for a sec, if you need to go from a point A to point B and you have 20 possibilities of routes to get there, what then determines the route you will take? Okay, you could think about that to say, I'll take the fastest route or I'll take a route that there, there are no tolls on the road or I could take a route that I'm familiar with to get to where I'm going to. And that's what project management present or offer because the ability to deliver work, to deliver task, to deliver assignment on a consistent or through a consistent framework makes at least the work easy in a way. And it makes you understand what needs to be done at each point along the journey. So project management as a framework provide that consistency in delivery of work, in delivery of task, and, and as an end result in delivering the project objective. The second why that I'm, I would like to share today is also balancing a number of parameters within the project management framework. Project management helps to truly balance a lot of, of parameters, including I know the popular one will be the golden, the, 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 the triangle, the project management triangle. But beyond that, there are many other parameters that you consider. So going beyond just the scope, the cost and, and time um, in, in that considering quality, but what about uncertainty? The things you don't know, because you don't know the future. What about ambiguity, the complexity of work to, to be delivered? What about risk of, of delivering work? So those are the things that within the project management framework, you have to balance and without a methodology to help you balance those, you might struggle to deliver the results required. So project management helps um, with that framework, with the tool, with the techniques to balance some of these most often conflicting parameters. The next I would like to speak to, speaking to the why of project management 
is the possibility of enhanced data and information um, to help the organization be better. So if we look at the system for value delivery as postulated by PMI, it says that for you to achieve the vision, mission, and objective of the organization, you have to have the right mix of portfolio, of programs, and of projects um, that is then transitioned into operation. And based on the interplay of portfolio programs and projects, you can then get feedback from doing the work feedback from transitioning the project into operation and then help management to make better decisions. And so delivering project based on tested and trusted framework, um, the organization is able to determine to a large extent the appropriate mix of project, the appropriate mix of programs and portfolio to truly deliver the, the objective of the organization. When I run projects, I am not just doing the work, but I'm also getting feedback that will help future projects be better. Of course, uh, as part of the project, you want to do lessons learned to help other project managers do the work easier, do the work more consistently, do the work with greater level of success. So if ever you're running a project and there is no sort of um, opportunities to learn on learn and relearn on that project, then indeed you, you have to do better for sure. The final point on the why of project is, is project management helps to move the dial a little bit closer to success than to failure. With the project management framework, you are able to, with a large extent, following the processes, following the methodology, to, to be guaranteed in a way, to use that word guarantee, of success because you're doing the right thing at the right time. Of course, that doesn't say that projects do not fail. We, um, a, a, a very um, important note, point to make here is that projects do fail. And, and um, a report that comes to mind at this point is the Standish Group report about the performance of projects. And the report highlights that 31% of projects actually are successful, 31% whilst we have about 50% of project that is done um, somewhat challenged, meaning they're probably delivering the project um, with higher cost, they're probably delivering the project um, beyond the time allocated for the project to be delivered, or they are delivering less than the scope that was intended at the time the, the project was initiated. So we have 50% of such projects within our organization. And the report says about 19% of our projects do fail. Um, so it's not that if, if you do project based on project methodologies or framework that there are no possibilities of failure, there are. And that report says that uh, the three factors that truly help and support success of project are Number one, good place. Good place meaning the structure within the, the organization, the decision-making process, and a number of factors around the organization itself. The second point is around good team, to have the right mix of resource, the right mix of people, the right processes to support the people to deliver the project. It's very key to the success of the project. And the third thing and final thing around success is good sponsorship as um, highlighted by that report. Good sponsorship or good sponsor relates to the fact that projects truly need leaders that are 
not just doing the project and leading the project because it's good, but they truly have skin in the game and they are invested in ensuring that the project is successful. So this consistency, success, information and balancing speaks to the why of project management. That's really the key. And that there are other points and reasons and benefit of doing project, but I wanted to mention this four key um, reasons why we do uh, or we, we deploy project management as a framework to deliver work within our organization. Okay, so we've spoken about why, what is then project management? Two key words here. The first is project. What is project? And of course, PMI defines project as a temporary endeavor that is undertaken to create a unique product, a unique service, or a unique value to the organization. And when we break that down, we're saying that project is about doing the work. Project is enabling organization to deliver product. It's enabling organization to deliver the service they need to deliver. And it's about delivering for the customer. It's always from a benefit standpoint from the customer. Within that parameter, we of course have project being time bound. You can't continue to do project forever. You must do it within a certain time. Projects are usually constrained by resource. You don't have unlimited resource. And somebody can say, James, I can have as much money to do my project, but you don't have as much time. So it's not just about money. It's about time. It's about people um, to do the work. Um, the next point around project is, is temporary, which is obviously around the time bound nature of project. And, and it's also important for us to plan, to execute, to control project. So you won't just say, now I'm doing a project without a plan, and you can't continue to plan without executing or implementing the plan, and you must control that plan based on certain established parameters or baselines. The final point around project is, project is, is performed by people, meaning that you can't just say, oh, I'm doing a project, but there are no people involved. It's all systems, it's all tools. So it's, and, and the reason why this is very important is people are unpredictable. And, and, and so you have to be able to manage emotions on the project. You have to be able to manage the challenges that come around building a team because you truly need people to be able to deliver on projects. Management, I like the definition by John Corder. It's about a set of well-known process. We're talking about management from a lens of how do we plan, how do we lead, how do we motivate the people to deliver on, on the work. It's about using all of the management techniques in helping the organization solve and deliver on on solutions um, and ensure that things are done predictably. It's about doing things in a way that is consistent. Like I said, the why of project is consistent. It helps to deliver success. It, it's, it's helping to ensure things can be done in a way that supports the vision of the organization. I like this definition when it comes to project management, and that's where I would move on. It says project management is about planning your project work and working your project plan. You have to plan the work and you have to work the plan. That's what project management is. And within planning your work and working the plan, you then have to bring management principles of leading, of resource, of scheduling, and all of that to help you achieve that. Okay. Um, we've, we've, we've spoken about the why, the what, and I wanted to just wrap this session before I bring in Olayinka for some quick contribution. 
So who then is a project manager? And this, this is really from my own experience, and this is what I truly believe in, that project managers are change agents. And why I say that is project itself is to help organization move from a certain current state to a desired future state um, along those lines we then implement you know, programs and projects to help organization achieve that. And so the project manager is there as a change agent to make that change happen. If your project is not changing anything, then you have to question and say, am I actually doing a project? I remember one of the things we spoke about project is delivering a new, um, a new service, a new product of value to people. It must be something new. And so project managers must see themselves as change agent. The next point here is project managers must motivate the workforce for results. And I say that because you cannot say you are a project manager, but you've not produced any results. The essence of project is to deliver value. Are you delivering value in the work you're doing are you then able to motivate the project team to deliver that work? Are you then able to be that conduit of support, conduit of knowledge to the people that you work with? And you have to remember that project managers themselves do not do the work that a project manager will rely on the project team to be able to deliver the work. So how do you motivate that team? to achieve that. And, and that takes me to the, to the third point of in, in, project managers must inspire change through results. Meaning that the change you want must be based on the result that is desired. We will not do projects when we know that that project is not adding to the, to the vision or to the actualization of the vision of the organization. We are not doing project because we feel great about it. We know the tools, we know the system, and we just want to do it to keep our jobs. No, we are making changes because it helps to deliver the result we want to see. The little bit of sticking point, and I know a lot of people will say, James, I'm a project manager. Do I need to be certified? I, 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 I will say yes. Uh, because it's it's it, it 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 it's it's difficult to be a project manager, um, and have the project management certification, um, and not be able to deliver on project. Then the essence of certification is defeated. So let's take for argument's sake that I am certified, but I don't know what project is. The belief is you then have to train yourself. You then have to work to get to the place where the certificate you hold match up with the skill that is required within that field. I have seen a lot of people go into, into project manage, management by um, the nature of the work they do. Um, they've been with the organization for a long time and they're saying, you know what, James, you are good. Um, we want you to manage and lead this team in developing this product. And they've done that over time and they do not have any certification, but they are great project managers. But the encouragement is always, if you truly know the work, why don't you show by certification that you know it? So and for those that have been certified and not the experience, I will also encourage them to ensure that they get the required experience to be able to justify the certification. But these are, these are, from my perspective, some of the elements of who a project manager is. The final slide I will share before I pass it on to Ola Inka is then to speak to what the project management career looks like. The first is the project management career is a high, in the mind career, meaning that there is huge opportunity. Um, and I was looking through, um, through the 
job website and some report. And one of the report I saw was that at the end of 2020, and this was you know, a report in 2019, um, there was going to be about 6.1 million project management jobs in the US alone. And, and the report from PMI is that that will double by 2026. So just imagine the huge opportunities that are bound within the project management space. So if you get trained and acquire the required um, experience within project management, then there's great opportunity for you to get a good job. The next is, I, I, I always say this when I'm in class and, and when we facilitate and train people in project management, that project management skills and knowledge are universal currencies, meaning that regardless of where you find yourself, you are able to deploy project management skill, be it in Nigeria, be it in the US, be it anywhere in the world, because it's universally accepted. It's not just across borders and beyond geographical boundaries. It's also across industries. So you will find project manage managers in, in financial sector, oil and gas, energy manufacturing, the skill and competence of project management can be deployed across multiple industry. And that truly makes project management um, very important. And so for anybody wanting or desiring, I think that should be uh, a motivating factor. The next point is strong and in power, meaning you can make good money um, as a project manager, for sure you can. And, and you could search this out, project management in terms of salaries and earnings are usually above average compared to most industries. So project managers are well paid, that I can tell you for sure. There's also a pride that comes with project management and when somebody asks, ask, what do you do to say, I'm a project manager, because you are making a change and you are truly contributing to the success of an organization. So there's a pride. It's not just the pride of doing the job. There's also the pride of certification, whether you are, um, you are a Scrum master, and you have the Scrum certification, whether you are on the side of, um, of the PMI certification or the Prince 2 certification, there's a pride that you have when you have um, you know, project management certifications and training. The penultimate point here is something I truly love about project management. The fact that you can transition as you go um, into, into um, project management further and further. You can start as a junior project manager and then move to a senior project manager, move into a program, uh, program manager, move into a portfolio manager, move into a consultancy role, and you are able to do this for as long as possible, um, which is, is great, whether as a private practice or working within an organization. I see myself as a program manager that is able to work for much longer because of the ability, um, the capacity to do the work at a much older age. So it's not a job that you say, oh, now I'm 50, I can, I can be a project manager. No, 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 you can do it as long as you desire at various, depending on where you want to play, whether as a consultant, whether as a mentor, whether as a trainer, you are able to do that for much longer. The final point here is the fulfillment that comes um, within the role of project management. And I say fulfillment because this is linked to the purpose. Yes, it's good to make money. Yes, it's good to, to have the pride and the great opportunities that are bound within the project management space but achieving purpose in life is, is most important and project management can help you 
really truly achieve your purpose in life. For as many people on this call today, even you, you might say, I don't have any project management skill. Uh, I've not had any project management training, but every one of us, we've done project management in one capacity or the other. We have. I'm sure a lot of us have gone to school. There's a plan to, to get the admission and then go through the training and then get your certificate at the end of the day. That is project management. You are delivering value to yourself. Some of us have we've organized body parties, we've, we've done our weddings, we've done a lot of function and ceremony that we had to plan who is going to be the musician, what, what food will people eat. So we do project management in a way of form in our life. And when we truly achieve it, there's a fulfillment that comes from that. Four quick things I want to mention when it comes to fulfillment and purpose. How do I know that I'm being fulfilled within the job I'm doing? Or how do I know what my purpose in life is? Four quick things that you need to check. The first thing you need to check when you talk, when, when it comes to fulfillment and purpose is what comes naturally to you? What do you get to do so naturally that others might struggle to achieve it or others might struggle to do it but when it comes to you, you can just do it so easily. That's the first thing. The second thing also is what do you do or what comes to you naturally that you do and you will continue to do it without being paid for it? That whether you make money out of it or you do not make money out of it, you just enjoy doing it. And I look at the life of actors and singers they will sing and act without being paid for it, but they get good money for, for doing it. Until our jobs come to the point where we feel, I will do this whether I'm being paid or not, then we can't truly really say we are, we are fulfilled in that role. The third thing about fulfillment and purpose is what do other people, senior people, more intelligent, wiser people see in you that you don't even see in yourself. I've seen a lot of people say, you know what, well, you're a good singer. And, you, and people just, no, I don't think so because they can't see it in themselves. Or you're a good communicator. No, I, I'm so shy to, to speak in public, but people say, no, you speak well. There are certain people that actually not just and push, push us forward to the place of our purpose. So a number of people who encourage us, who mentor us, who coach us, to achieving our purpose and for, fulfill our destiny in life. And the final point is what frustrates you? A lot of us, when we enter into a dirty room, we are so frustrated and we say, no, we're gonna clean this up. And it, it's, 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 it's the same in our career and in our work life, that you just want things to be done properly, rightly, things to be done meticulously. And a lot of the time, our frustrations are not our weakness, but a source of strength. If we channel our energy rightly in making it better. So when we're talking about project management, are you frustrated when companies are not successful, when things are not done based on principle processes to achieve success and the desired end result? You might just be a project manager in the making, but you need to tap into it to really find out if that is true. So that is what I want to present initially before I bring in Olayinka, just to share a little bit perspective around his own journey on getting into project management. And as Olayinka will share with us, I also wanted to ask you to put in the chat, if possible, for those that are project managers, what drove you into project management? What is the motivation? Um, is it because you see opportunities? Is it because you have the skill, you have the knowledge? Is it because of money? You just feel, you know what? I can make money here. Or the pride of saying I'm a project manager. Or is it your purpose? Is it a calling for you to be within that project management space? So put in the chat, why did you, why did you choose you know, to go into project? 
management. Ola Inka, I will pass it on to you. Is there anything that resonates with you in, in the things I've shared so far? And some, of course, your perspective around your project management career. Thank you so much, James. Thank you so much. And it's good to be, to be here and hello everyone. So I will start today by with a, a post shared by one of the greatest uh, entrepreneurs, uh, Tony Olumelu. Tony Olumelu shared this post last week and I quote, he said, strategy is important, but execution is everything. And if at that level, I have to reshare that post because then I have this mindset that say, whoa, at this level, my job is recognized. So who is the project manager? So a project manager is simply that person that lead organization to the promised land. A project manager is that person that help organizations to turn their strategy to reality. So I have to reshare that post I'm in the project management, I start project manager, project, because that actually resonates with me. And, and also for me to know how important project management is to the three levels. If Tony Olumolu can share that, Strategy is good, but execution is everything. Then who lead the executions? Who turns strategy to reality? Project managers. So, and, and I'm so glad when you actually, when you actually spoke about it, I was so, what you said and what he said aligned with everything. I said, so it's actually very, very important for project manager to understand the value they are bringing to the organization. Another thing you mentioned about, uh, talked about is uh, the process. And what comes to my mind is, how can we be consistently consistent in delivery of value? So project manager helps organization to ensure they have a process that help them to consistently consistent in delivery of value. So that comes to accuracy and precision. I can throw a dart arrow and hit once and be accurate. But can I throw 100 arrows to a board and eat and I can tell my customer, if I throw this arrow to that board, I'm sure I'm going to eat 50 times. And we have a process that ensures that we can deliver that scope continuously, consistently. So that when you mentioned that, that actually resonates with me. And so another thing you want that you spoke about is certifications. Why do we need, why certifications? Why do people understand certifications? In project management, certification is not just a, certification is not just a, 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 a certificate. Mm -hmm. In fact, in project management, Certification is actually to ensure you understand the basic process of delivering value. So that now comes, let's now look at, let's pair that with someone who just learned the project money, who has worked in a particular area for some, for some years. And by so doing, they ask him or her to, to be a project manager because he or she has worked in that particular area for some time. So we refer to that the project manager by Adler effect. So, so what separates a professional project manager and, and a project manager by Adler effect is the understanding of the process. Understanding of the process and the certification ensure you understand this process end to end and the reason you are doing this process and the value and let me you give an example. Between some few years back, IT, let me digress a bit. IT service management changed from version two to version three. Version two concentrate on service management. Version three actually look at the value. So what is the value? Let me look at 
a, a, a trading company that the customer, that a cleaner mistakenly removed RJ45 cable on the wall. And this mistake lead to $40 billion just for one minute. Because they how do you place value on that mistake? So now let's place the right value on not using the right process or not understanding the right process of project management. So what happens? That's what lead to a lot of sunk costs that we have in project management. So those are just area and those are just area that is mentioned. That I think I really, really, really appreciate and resonate with me. All right, so I would like to go back to my journey in project management. Mm -hmm. And, and it still started with my boss. I used to be an application support developers and the rest. And I was working in this office and we call it e-business of a bank. And I'm in charge of supporting the EFTL applications. And, and one day one of my boss called me and said, uh, he called me by my son, Magbola, I have this book and I'm tired of reading it. Uh, PM book third edition then. I'd be like, can you look at it and let's discuss it. And then I was look, actually looking for a direction. Mm -hmm. And someone mentioned in the chat room now that passion. You see, most there are two people in organization, people that just work and people that have a career path. As I then, I was actually looking for a career path. We've tried networking, tried everything, but I was looking of, for something that I'm passionate about. Something that really, so when you gave me PM Book Third Edition, 2009, I look at it and take times I look at it, read it end to end, end to end. And I came back to the office and on getting back to the office, I started seeing the issues that we are having with our vendors. Part of the issues, we have a project then called ATM Care Project. And, and this project, it has been, and never ending story. Mm. Mm. So I've been on and on and I, in fact, I, met, I joined the bank, I made the project and they gave me the project. So between the vendors and the product owner or the, who I can call the product manager of the bank, they always have issues every time because this guy will come, the vendor will come and say, oh, we have this. And the product manager say, oh, this is good. Can we add air to it? Can he have a chain? Can he? And the, pro, the vendor project manager doesn't, doesn't know enough to say, wow, okay, can we look at the impact of this chain? Mm -hmm. That's by the fact that he's in the water and says, okay, is it in our scope and try to manage the, the scope. And this, so when we have these issues and become management issues, so that year I look at it and I make my recommendation to my boss. You say, you know what, can we review the scope of this project? And in, to cut the long story short, we are able to, to solve the issue. And since then, it has been a very, very good journey. So that is the journey of, that is how I get into project management. And that year, it actually make my appraiser, because my boss could be my appraiser. I can't forget 2009. In fact, when they moved me to Southwest as a regional coordinator, it's part of it that Allah in Kagwala, was able to apply his knowledge of project management to resolve S Y Z. So thank you so much. That is my journey. And it, 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 it's it's amazing, Alainka, what you say. And you've said quite a number of very important things. But I I, I just want us to go back. You said your manager said, "Can you read this PM book three version? Come back to me and tell me." I'm sure there must have been something he saw in you to be able to say get that you took that and you ran with it and now you are, you are a senior project manager even a senior project consultant so that that's interesting to hear i wanted to ask you before before i go to the final slide and, and wrap it up and i know time is fast spent what would be the most important thing that you would say you did to be able to achieve the success that you've achieved so far within your project management career you mute, you muted. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. So thank you so much. So if you actually look at uh, 
definition of project management, the first thing that I said is application of knowledge. Mm. So which means that before you apply anything, before you apply, and what happened? Before you apply a knowledge, you must first acquire a knowledge. Mm. So the first thing that I did that I can say, I can look at and say is first thing, acquire the knowledge. Mm. And one of the big issues that we have in project, I saw an, a job advert on, on LinkedIn today. And the guy said, I'm not interested in anyone with technical domain expert. I want a project manager that can actually follow up on timeline, follow up on this for a very, very long time. I saw someone, a recruiter that understand because project management is actually a domain area on its own. So other thing, other technical knowledge that you can get, you, your, your job is actually for you to get a subject matter expert opinion and run with it. So, so for me, what, what the bedrock of my success in project management is actually, after, is actually acquiring the knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm not a project manager that learn project manage that get into project management by halo effect. It's actually training, meant then I got a mentor. Someone that guide me in project management. That's why today I have a lot of people that reach out to me and on LinkedIn and hey, can we do this? In fact, one of them got a job in Germany last week and said, like, I got that job. And that for me, I'm not paid, and, but I'm happy. Each time I have something like that, it's, it gives me joy. I, I can't, when it comes to project management, for me, it's, 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 it's kind of passion. It's something you don't want to touch when I'm discussing project management. So, so basically, so my bedrock is first acquired knowledge. I think that what I can see as what counted for me when it comes to this, my sources in project management. Then continuous learning culture. Continuous learning culture. The difference between uh, the gap, despite the fact that uh, PM Box 6th edition is also encapsulated in the PM Box 7th edition. But the gap of that new thing that is being added, you can't. You have to continuously improve yourself. That's why, that's what I can say that's been my own success story in project management. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alainka. I think it's it's amazing point you make in terms of if project management itself is the application of knowledge, then are you knowledgeable, you know, within that field? And it's not just static knowledge to say, I know this, it's continuous capacity, ability, inclination to better yourself, to be relevant across multiple, several years and organizations. So I think, I think that's a good point. We have just about five minutes to wrap up. I want to encourage people, if you have any questions, something that you'd like to know about, you know, how do I get into project management career? How do, what do I do? If there are specific questions, we'd like for you to put those questions in, in the chat um, and we'll take some bit of, of time to, to go through it. If we are able to attend or answer those questions within this session, we will definitely reach back to you and ensure those questions are answered. I, I want to be sure that we, we, we cover some of the key points within this webinar. And one of the key points that we've, we've wanted, we wanted to communicate was, how do I get into project management career? How do I ensure that I'm able to start from where I, I am right now to where I want to be? And I just want to, want to wrap up with this. How do you start and start in your career? And this applies to any career, whether it's project management, whether it's business analysis, whether it's data analytics, whatever it is, is, is to count the cost. And when we talk about counting the cost, I, I just want to use the cost as a, a sort of um, word 
to resonate in our heart as we think through this and something that I will appreciate if we continue to reflect on even after this webinar, the cost. What is the cost of getting into this career? And when we talk about the cost, we're talking about C. The first letter of that cost, C, is choice. What is the, what is the purpose or the trigger or what is informing your choice of wanting to go into project management? What is that? Is it because you you want to make money? Is it because you have somebody who is encouraging you to go into that field? What's driving the choice of wanting to come into or wanting to start your, your project management career? I think it's important to start from there. It's always going back to the um, to the philosophy of Simon Sinek around starting with the why. And the, the basis of your choice is truly the answer to why you want to go into project management. Why the choice? The second point around the cost is O, which is opportunity. For you to truly make any success out of project management, you have to then take the chance or take the, I don't want to say just jump into it, but you have to then evaluate that opportunity that you think you know, you see, or you've heard of to be sure that that opportunity is for you. Not all open doors are good door. There might be money to be made, but with that money, there's always a cost to it. And so this is the point where for any intending project manager, you are sitting down, you know, some bit of cost benefit analysis of if I go into this job, what am I going to put in, into it and what am I going to get back out of it? So you have to evaluate the opportunity. The third point I want to mention is skill. Do you have the prerequisite skill and competence to do the job? Now you have PMP, you have Prince 2, you have Scrum Master Certification. Do you then, beyond the certification, do you have the skill that you need to be able to succeed within um, the project management space? It's important. Then you, need, you might need to work with a mentor. You might need to, to, to have a coach. You might need to have sparing partners that you can run things through to be able to achieve it and evaluate your skill. Be that learning in the next, um, in May would be, um, we'll, we'll start off as PMP bootcamp. And I encourage as many of you who, who, are, who would be seeking, you know, to improve themselves, we're seeking to, to find a good training facility to be able to do project management training, to definitely send um, an email to info at binet learning.com to ask and know about what it takes to be part of that PMP bootcamp starting off on the 14th of May, 2022. It's important to evaluate that. Info at binetlearning.com um, because you need to continue to develop yourself and to be better. The final point I want to mention today, and I hope that this resonates with you, is in every profession, there's a trade secret that in every, whatever, whether medical, whether data, whether business analysis, they are trade secrets that you have to dig into the ground and get to know. It might be true, somebody who is well vast within that profession. It might be that, you know, you, you get your hands dirty, you make mistakes, you learn from your mistake, but you must find the trade secret. One of such trade secret is you cannot be a project manager and not be a good communicator. In fact, it has been said that the real failure of project or the failure of project manager is the lack to communicate. So if you want to be a project manager, you must be able to communicate effectively. You must be able to motivate a team. You must be able to provide leadership and influence without power. You must be able to do that. Those are the trade secrets 
that people doing certification and training might not tell you, but you have to find it. The gold, the precious metal, and the precious things of the earth are not found on the top of the soil. They are found in the belly of the earth, and you must dig for it. So anybody seeking to go into project management, always ask yourself, what are the trade secrets that I need to get to be able to succeed within project management? For the sake of time, we'll wrap it up from there. I will pass it on to John. But I want to say thank you to everybody. As you begin to think about what is informing my choice to go into project management, have I done a business case, a cost-benefit analysis of the opportunities within project management? Do I have the required skill training, whether it is art skill, soft skill, technical skills to be able to deliver? And do I truly or can I truly find the trade secret within project management to be relevant, to be a rule maker and not a rule taker? And I hope that as you do this, you would indeed be a successful, great um, project manager. That's my presentation today. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Olayinka, for being part of this. And thank you so much. I pass it on to you, John, um, to wrap us up. All right, thank you very much, James. Thank you very much, Alainka. This has been a wonderful, wonderful session. We have a couple of questions in the um, chat box, but uh, we might not be able to take all. I think we can take one. Um, and I'll, I'll drop a link in the chat box where you can, you know, if you have further questions, you can fill, fill it up and um, we, um, we will reach out to you and, you know, take your questions. So. Um, I'll just take one. Um, James, could you please um, quickly, you know, um, answer it? Um, yes. Okay. From um, from um, Jumi, for everyone, okay. he said it's my first time of trying to do something different. Um, I have always been a customer service resolution person for the past eight years. What does it take to go into project management? Um, you quickly just, you know. And I think we've mentioned it. What does it take to go into project management? The first is, do you have the passion for it? Do you understand what project management takes? Do you, do you, have you sat with somebody who is a project manager to say, tell me what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Because we often assume that we can't do it. I will realize, oh, well, I can do this when we have enough information. So for me, I think it's for you to sit with somebody who is already within that field and know a little bit more before you make the decision to say you want to go into it. I know there are a number of factors that will, that will sort of um, motivate or titillate us to want to go into it. Of course, the money is good, there's pride, but understanding what it takes, that's the first one. Number two, Ola Inka mentioned it, you need training. Uh, especially if you do not have hands-on experience already. It's like you can't become a medical doctor without going to school first. No matter how much your dad is a medical doctor, you can't just go pick up his certificate and say, you know what, my dad is a medical doctor, I want to be a medical doctor. His certificate and certification cannot help you become. So you have to build knowledge yourself. So you are within the customer care service. Are you trained in the profession of project management, you need to be trained. As, as you train, you then go into the level of, can I be certified that my training really truly applies to, to the scope of project management and then I can, I can deliver when I get a role. Of course, it doesn't start in a day. The second is then to begin to find opportunities to either either volunteer so that you can begin to develop hands-on experience. And then with that, you can then go into a junior project manager role, build your skills, competence, confidence from there. And then you can go into senior, more senior roles within project management. But I go back to it, it starts from, do I truly want this? Yes, I want it. What does it take? And then do it. Even do it when you feel you are not confident, get the training, get the certification, get the answer and experience, and you should be okay. All right, thank you very much, James. Um, like he has already said, you know, a way of 
get into project management is really to just go all out and you know get the training, get um, get the certification. Certification is what that we um, being at learning to we have an upcoming certification. PMP certification would come on the 14th of May uh, to get into project management. If you'd like to, you know, get the certification, you would, you you could you know register um, for that. You know, I talking about the importance of project management. It's I, I don't think it's something that can be overstated because um, recently I did a quick search on LinkedIn on you know roles, project management rules, and you know there were millions of openings. You know, in, in just the United States alone. You know, that is like an indicator that, you know, project management economy is here to stay. And also, you know, talking about certifications, you say project management, PMP certification, you know, stands to be why you should get it, stands to be one of, you know, the most popular one, the certification, you know. And, you know, the certification not only helps you stand out from the herd, but also proves your commitment to the profession. As a project manager, if you are popular, Function is as a project manager, you don't have the certification. The PMP certification is like an indicator, it's like a credential to show that yes, you are you you stand out from the herd and you are, and prove your commitment to the profession. You know, it recognizes that you have knowledge on the subject and proves your skills to your peers, to your superiors, and you know, your clients. So, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. James. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for um joining joining the call is we are really we, we are really really happy to have you um we like i said we already have our upcoming boot camp boot camp pmp boot camp is on the 14th of may 2022 if you have more questions um i dropped the google form in the um, chat box so you can fill it up and we'll have um, our program managers reach out to you to answer all your questions so once sure. again, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, Alainka. No, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. And thank you to everybody. I wanted to mention before people, I know we could be and apologize that we couldn't take as many questions. But as John said, please pass your question. Please, you can reach out to us. You can reach out to me, John Ojuragbisa, and the rest of the BNET team. You can reach out to us and be looking forward to hearing from you. Um, we apologize again that Faith couldn't join. We would have further opportunities to bring her in for sure. And I want to say thank you, especially to Olai Inka, um, for taking the time to share his own personal perspective with us. And to everybody that joined, I think it's, it's amazing to see the number of people Thank you, thank you. Let's keep this conversation going. Please reach out to us, info at bnetlearning.com. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, John, for hosting. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. We have come to the end of our session, so um, feel free to follow us on our pages, um, Bnet Learning, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook um, for more updates on our courses and, you know, from our, from our offerings, really. So follow us on our pages on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Facebook at Bnet Learning. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining the session, and do have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.